Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with an exponential expression. We have 5 to the power x equals 4, and we're going to evaluate 20 to the power x all over x plus 1. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this problem in different ways. I'm going to be presenting at least two methods. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. So the first method is going to focus on logarithms, which is pretty straightforward, right? So since we know that 5 to the power x equals 4, we're going to go ahead and log both sides with base 4 so that we can isolate x. If you log both sides with base 4 because base 5, I mean base 5, that's what I meant, these two are going to give us 1 because log 5 with base 5 is always 1. This gives us x. So x can be written as log 4 with base 5. Okay? It's kind of like the other way around, but anyways, the way you read it. So now we can go ahead and replace x with that. The problem though, we kind of need to Hmm, let me see. I think we can pull it off by using some properties of logarithms. So let's go ahead and evaluate 20 to the power x over x plus 1. So that's the goal, right? So we're going to place x with log 4 divided by log 4 plus 1. Now here's one thing you can do to combine these two things. It's just called condensing. Since uh, 1 is not a logarithm, we can write it as a logarithm because we, know, we have a rule that says if you have log a plus log b, by the way, this works for any base, so we can put in base x here, is going to e be equivalent to log a, b, okay? And vice versa, of course. If you have a product and you're logging a product, it's equivalent to adding the two logs. So here we can re replace 1 with log 5 because we're in base 5, and then this becomes 20 to the power log 4 divided by log 4 plus log 5. Of course, they're both in base 5. Everything is in base 5. And now we're able to combine these two things. And that actually gives us 20 to the power log 4. And this is going to give us log 20, 4 times 5, right? But again, the base is 5. Now, another property of logs come into play here, which is called change of base. How does change of base work? Let me show you. Change of base works like this. If you have log A with base B, then you can write it as log A over log B. The base doesn't matter as long as you use the same base. So I'm just going to put a little X here for the common base because they have to have the same base. That's how you do it. What do you do here though? Well, you kind of work it backwards. Notice that we have the same base. So we're going to have A and B like that. This is our A. This is our B. In other words, this becomes log 4 with base 20. Hmm, that's interesting. What is that supposed to mean? Another property of logs coming. And there's a lot of properties that you have to use. That's why you're probably going to like the second method a little better because it doesn't use logs. Okay, there you go. I gave you the clue. So if you have something like B to the power log a with base b, then these two bases cancel each other out because that's what the definition of log say, and it becomes a. Here the same thing happens. You have 20 and 20. They're both bases, and they are the same, so the answer should be 4. This is equal to 4. And that is the answer because that's what we're looking for. Remember, we were looking for 20 to the power x over x plus 1 when 5 to the power x is equal to 4, and that's what we exactly found. Wait a minute. Is that the same thing as the original problem? Well, kind of. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean they're always going to be equal, but in this case, that happens to be the same thing. Make sense? I hope it does, because we're about to start the second method. Now, again, uh, we used change of base formula. We used the fact that b to the power log a with base b is equal to a, and we also used, um, what's it called, condensing this, uh, and we turned one into a log, okay? There we go. So lots of properties that you need to know. Logs are all about properties, basically. But it's the same as exponentials. There are rules that govern exponents, right? You just reverse them, okay? Somewhat flip them the other way around. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and let me know which method you like better because you get to decide. So five to the power x is equal to four and I'm supposed to evaluate 20 to the power x over x plus one. 
Okay, let's see if we can find the exact same thing that we found with method one. All right, great. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and first uh, split the numerator and the denominator because the denominator is kind of causing some problems. So let me go ahead and write it this way. 20 to the power x over x plus one. Let me write it as 20 to the power x to the power one over x plus one. Later on, I may have to work with that in a different way, but uh, let's wait for that time. Now, 20 to the power x is actually closer to what we're trying to use. 5 to the x and 20 to the x. What do you think? 20 can be written as 5 times 4. So we can basically write this as 5 to the power x times 4 to the power x. We have a really nice property of exponents, by the way. If you have a, b to the n, it's a to the n, b to the n. And if you have a to the n, b to the n, it can be written like that. So it works both ways. Make sense? And how is that going to help us? Let's see how that works. But replace 20 to the power x with that. And I should probably not separate them first, but anyways, you get the idea. So it's going to look like this. 5 to the x to the power 1 over x plus 1. And then 4 to the power x to the power 1 over x plus 1. Great. Now, we do know that 5 to the x is 4. And we can kind of replace this with 4, which is a good thing to do. Yay. That'll help out. So now we can write this as 4 to the power 1 over x plus 1. And this one as 4 to the power x over x plus 1. Yay, we got the same base. Beautiful. Now we can go ahead and combine these, add the exponents. We get 4 to the power 1 over x plus 1 plus x over x plus 1. Again, another property of exponents. a to the power m plus n, a to the m times a to the n, or vice versa. Some people say, like, you're going over basic stuff. Yeah, but not everybody knows the basic stuff. That's why I'm going over, going over this thing. Okay? Now, we do have two fractions that have the same denominator, so we can add their numerators. But guess what? 1 plus x and x plus 1 are the same. So this is equivalent to 4 to the power 1, which is equal to 4. And yay, we found the same answer. Right? <laughs> awesome. Obviously, there's a couple different ways to go about it. Could we not use the fact that 5 to the power x is equal to 4? Probably not. But here's what I'm thinking. Now, notice that this might count as a third method, like a bonus maybe. So if we're trying to evaluate 20 to the power x over x plus 1, right? What if I set it equal to y and then raise both sides to the power of reciprocal of this? So in other words, 20 can be written as y to the power x plus 1 over x, right? And then uh, you can kind of, hmm, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but this is what I'm thinking. Maybe we can separate it into y to the power x over x, which is 1, times y to the power 1 over x. Okay, and that's 20. Hmm. If I raise both sides to the power of 20, it's not going to work. But I can do at least 5 times 4 here. And then from here, can I replace uh, 4 with 5 to the power x? Yes. 5 to the power x. This is going to give me 5 to the power x plus 1. And then something like this. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work, but I don't know. You can do the rest. <laughs> because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to... Comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out my other channel on complex numbers, A plus B, I, and bye-bye.